Hello, hello, hello. Gather round, people, and welcome to another episode of the Professional Nomad Podcast. As always, I am your humble host, Stefano, and thank you if you are able to attend this live stream in person. Please make sure that you hit that like button. Please make sure that you are subscribed. Please make sure that you hit that notification bell so you can know when we are going live, everybody. Um. <clears throat> Here we are again, talking and preaching accountability. Last week, we did a blind reaction to the Nathan Wade testimony. We held him accountable for his actions in the whole Fannie Willis situation, because as a man, you should be in control of your own destiny, your own actions, everything you do, every choice you make. You are in control of it, and you should know this. So this week, we're going to do another blind reaction, but we're going to do one to the testimony to the person that caused all of this in the first place, the former attorney of Nathan Wade himself, Mr. Terrence Bradley. See, if it wasn't for Bradley, let's say pillow talking or whatever his motive was, being spiteful, if you ask me, that's what he was doing. If he wasn't doing all this simply because of trying to be vengeful, running and talking to the opposing counsel in the Donald Trump election interference trial, we would have never had any of this going on with Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade in the first place. And he went to more than one person telling his story. He also went to another DA in another county in Georgia and told them the same story. And they actually got Fanny calling the man while he was in the office talking to the DA. So like I said last week, this isn't a law channel. This isn't 60 minutes. This isn't Dateline NBC. This is just a conversation that we're going to have. This is basically barbershop talk that we do here. We're going to keep it real and we're going to be open and honest about things over here. That's what we do on this channel. Once again, we have hit the 187 subscriber mark. Thank you for everyone that is subscribed. Keep tuning in. Keep hitting that subscribe button. Keep sharing the content. Tell a friend about it. Let them know what we got going on over here. There's a lot of nomadic mindset people just like you out there that need something to do and someone to pretty much let them know that it's okay to have this mindset. So what we want to do is reach out, network, and collaborate with each other, which is why I got the Nomad Worldwide WhatsApp group. This is why I formed it. I am going to be adding people, like I've been saying the past couple of weeks, but this WhatsApp group is only going to be for networking purposes only. It's not a place where we're going to post funny memes or troll people or do things like this. This is for business and to help people get on. So when you're added to the group, if you do any of those things, you'll be taken out. Also, like I said, 
And once this channel is monetized, I'm going to be offering memberships. When I offer memberships, if you become a member, you have the option of automatically being added to the Nomad Worldwide WhatsApp group. Because there'll be more content creators in that WhatsApp group sharing content, right? Because this is the men-centric channel. But it can benefit both men and women. And we're doing this not just for people inside of the United States. We're doing this on the international thing, the international basis. So, like I said last week, if someone in the Philippines got a business opportunity, they'll be able to post it in the group and somebody here in the West can take advantage of it if they need to. And the group will be free. You just have to adhere to the guidelines. Um, it's going to be dope. It's going to be a great thing. It's a bright and sunny day here where I'm at. It feels great outside, so there's no better time than to than the present than to talk about this topic of dry snitching and talking about people and what's what, what's going on right now. It's simply because Nathan Wade's former attorney, Terrence Bradley, simply being put was ousted from their law firm. He was ousted because of a scandal that he was involved in regarding a Latina who he harassed and she sued him and won and he had to pay her. So for this, they kicked him out of the law firm, basically. So now on top of that, he lost his wife. His wife divorced him because of this too. So now you have a man in his feelings, pretty much lost everything, has to start over. And he sees his former law partner ascending without him, and he didn't like it, which goes to the very first part of the video. An insert from Belly, an excerpt from Belly, where the guys are like, mm -mm, I don't like that. I'm going to drop a dime on him. And that's what he did. He went to Ashley Merchant, who represents one of the guys in the Trump trial, and started talking. So the video that we're going to do the blind reaction to is the testimony after the testimony that he gave after the text messages leaked of him and Ashley Merchant. After he had to meet with Judge Scott McAfee and determine what he knew and what was attorney-client privilege and what wasn't. So this would be that testimony, and they're going to press him about it real hard. But at the same time, you got to remember, he's being pressed behind the scenes by Nathan Wade. So a lot of the stuff that he's going to answer to is going to say, I don't recall. <clears throat> I don't recall. But it's too late. And see, that's the part about being accountable for your actions. Because if he would have never done any of this, then, well, quite frankly, saying we would never have this whole thing going on. So first off, let me see who we got in the building right now. Shy talk the Jedi. Thank you, brother, for stopping through here. Appreciate it, bro. Salute to you as always, my friend. All right. Black Empowerment. Thank you, brother. Thank you for coming back through. Namaste, my friend. Thank you. Salute to you, too. There you go. There you go. Jermon. What's up, man? What y'all going to, what your Kansas City Chiefs going to do, Jermon? They done got rid of Sneed. What y'all going to do? I, I need to know this because, I, I mean, he was one of the reasons why y'all made it to the Super Bowl. He was a lockdown defense, defensive corner for you, man, and now he's with the Titans. What, what's going on with that? <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, you might want to talk about it. <clears throat> and today, guys, if I got enough people in attendance, I'm going to drop the link, and I want to hear you guys' opinion on – this Terrence Bradley pillow talking situation with Ashley Merchant. 
So stick around. Stick around. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. He so basically what happened, Black Empowerment, he got kicked out of the law firm. So it was a it was a law firm with three people in it. It was Nathan Wade, it was Nathan Wade, somebody named Chris. I can't think of what his name is. Chris, Chris something, and Terrence Bradley. Bradley couldn't keep it in his pants. I mean, I mean, Nathan couldn't either, but Bradley got caught. So what Bradley did is his wife found out because how you're not going to find out that your husband's being sued for it's harassment. You know what I'm saying? And went to court and he had to pay the lady. 20, 30 grand, something like that. I forgot. It's a nice little amount where he had to break the lady off. So your wife is going to notice this, so he had to come clean. And when he did, she left. So now he got to pay her alimony. So he lost all the way around. So because of that, basically what happened is he decided to ruin it for Nathan Wade. So First thing he did is he went to that DA, I think it's in Cobb County, and started talking. And when he was in the office talking to the Cobb County DA, Fannie called him. They basically were trying to silence him. But what he did was when Fannie called him, he was on the phone, and the DA lady could hear the whole conversation. She heard the whole conversation. He didn't even had to put it on speakerphone. Fanny got a big mouth. So boom. So she heard it. Fanny didn't really say anything incriminating, but the point is Fanny called him talking about the case. So this guy, this whole, whole testimony that we're going to do a blind reaction to is him pretty much trying to cover his ass because after the text messages leaked, he looked bad because not only did he break attorney-client privilege, which is pretty much going to guarantee him being ending up in, in, in a civil lawsuit with Nathan Wade, it's also going to pretty much kill his career. He's done. It's over. He's done. So that's his problem. So before, he was just salty. He was mad because Nathan Wade was winning and he was smashing the DA. So he decided to ruin it for him, but he forgot one thing and that he was representing Nathan Wade in his divorce. So I think he got so blind by his anger that he just started wanting to spill the beans and he just showed up at the courthouse one day where Ashley Merchant was start talking to her then all of a sudden they get into a text message chain they're talking about the case and he just told it all and the text messages are out there and yeah it's, it's a bad thing because he he looks he looks real bad put it that way y'all can't read y'all not gonna reload man y'all just signed the big old de and and it's over, Jermon. Y'all not going to three-peat. I don't like getting to see it. I'm, you know me. I'm a Sam friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, Black Empowerment, that's what's popping. And like I said, if it's, if it's if enough of y'all stay around here, I'm going to drop the link. I was going to do it last week, but we didn't have enough people in attendance. I mean, I got 16 people watching across all platforms. Right now, we're live on Facebook, we're live on YouTube, and we're live on Twitter. But... I need enough people uh, in attendance on YouTube to drop that link and y'all can come up here and talk about what's going on. But without further ado, let's get into this testimony. And let's hear how this man gets pressed like a pair of jeans with heavy starch. One second, boom. Sorry, under these circumstances, 
um, I'm going to just go straight to where we left off before. Um, Bonnie Willis and Nathan Wade were in a romantic relationship, correct? Correct. And um, it began at the time that they were both municipal court judges, correct? Aye. Objection, Your Honor, based on privilege. That Over. Covered immediately. Okay, overall. I do not have knowledge of it starting um, or when it started. Um, Terrence, you told me that it started when they were both municipal court judges, though, correct? That is incorrect. Um, you never confirmed in writing that it was instead of magistrate court, it was in municipal court when they were started dating? If we're speaking of the text message, you can go to that text message and you can read that text message and I will explain the text message to you, but you and I did not have a conversation about when it started. You asked a compound question of magistrate court versus, I mean, you, you said it was magistrate court municipal, match, I mean, you said uh, match, magistrate court conference, I'm sorry. Um, and then you asked another question. I said, no, municipal court, nothing else. I'm referring to a different um, conversation. I asked you, do you think it started before she hired him? And I'm going to object to this covered in the previous hearing where uh, Mr. Bradley said he had no personal knowledge of the exact text. Of this. Now, let me stop it right here real quick so I can give a little context on what's going on. So basically, you can see Terrence Bradley, all right? Let me give you another look at him, all right? Terrence Bradley, right? He's on the stand because Ashley Merchant had to call him to testify because they were saying, Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade were saying she was lying about the affair. And because he volunteered the information that led to her filing her motion she had to subpoena him. That's why I started off with her saying, I'm sorry, we had to meet under these circumstances. She ain't sorry. She ain't sorry one bit. Because she, I mean, first off, how did he not know that talking to the opposing counsel of his client was not somehow going to end up going this way? I said the same thing about Nathan Wade last week practicing law for all these years. You practice law for all these years, right? And you're supposed to be a trained an attorney, learn to think of all kinds of scenarios, all kinds of things that could possibly happen. Why didn't you think this was going to be a possibility? And now, mind you, Everything she's going to be talking to this guy about, everything she's going to say to him is straight off of her text message chain that she has printed off and has in court. All of the messages that has all the information that he volunteered. And he's going to be sitting here looking so stupid to where he's going to play dumb like he don't know what's going on. Let's get back to it. Um, Merchant is speaking of and actually used uh, in a, to in an attempt to refresh his recollection. He explained exactly um, what he's explaining to the court for. So this is uh, repetitive and unnecessary. I would object to ask and answer the relevance of this question. All right. Uh, perhaps we'll get there. But I think first, Ms. Merchant has the right to draw his attention to the exact potentially inconsistent statement. Thank you, Judge. Um, may I approach him? So overruled. This is you in may. The text. And for purposes of the record, uh, I believe, Ms. Merchant, you tendered, was it the entire text chain as an exhibit? Um, I only tendered a few of the texts, but I did give the state their co their courtesy copies last time um, of the exhibits. Was this one tendered? This one was not tendered. All right. And I'm happy to tender it. Well, we'll just take it as it comes. Whatever you we're need. We're at, um, I think, I think we're at 39. 
I will wait to mark it, um, but I think we're at 39. May I approach you? You may. All right. Um, so, Terrence, do you remember telling me that it started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton? I see the message there, but I, I don't recall. Um, I do see that message, but I do not recall. You don't recall texting this? I look back at my text messages um, through uh, that we've had. I see that message, but I do not recall that, no ma'am. Um, and when I asked you if you start, if you thought it started before she hired him and you responded, absolutely. Your Honor, I'm going to object as to the source of the information um, that Mr. Bradley allegedly gathered this from. Um, there's been absolutely no foundation uh, and based on the arguments at the last hearing that a lot of this is based on gossip, innuendo, assumption, uh, and privileged information. And at this point, Ms. Merchant has not uh, provided a foundation as to how Mr. Bradley had any information that she keeps uh, referring to. All right. I think that's, I, go ahead, Ms. I, I didn't ask him about the source of the information. Um, and under Rule 621, I can impeach him with any inconsistent facts. This is an inconsistent fact. I can impeach him with any contrary facts. Sure. Why would it be fact. a relevant uh, impeachment if he actually has no personal knowledge of this? If he doesn't. Sure. So I think knowledge. you have to lay that foundation then, so that'll be sustained. Um, do you remember telling me that it began? Well, that's that doesn't address the. No, not. I was I was just asking if you remember telling me as opposed to the okay, text. Sure. Do you remember telling me that it began? Well, no. And then you're going into the substance of it, which we haven't determined whether he actually knows or how he knows. Um. You told me. In fact, you corrected me when I said magistrate court. You corrected me and said it was municipal court. Yeah. Do you remember? Let me stop it right there. Could your mind brought up a good point, good observation. Look at her face. She is laughing, Jeremiah. She's laughing. Look at her cheekbones. She's laughing. <laughs> oh, oh, she is laughing because. They got the text messages, and the guy sitting there like, "Yeah, hey, hey, I, I see the message, but I don't, I don't recall." Bro, it's too late now for you to sit up here and try to play dumb when you were sitting there texting this lady for days. This lady was sending you motions to review, and you, you basically clarified that everything was correct on these motions. You helped her pretty much prove her case. You are the one. And I don't know what he thought he was going to get out of it. I don't know if he was trying to slick smash on slide, thinking that this was going to, you know, get him in the door. I mean, it could have been. Because this is what dudes do. You first. This is firsthand Right here, you can see it firsthand how dudes are trying to do something real shady and shisty like this to try to get a girl. And the whole time, the girl is juicing him for information only to make herself look good. And to be honest, none of the other attorneys that are in this trial even wanted to have her back on the motion. I don't know if you've been paying attention or watching the lead attorney channel, but they touched on it over there too. But she had to put her neck out for this just to file the, the, the motion because nobody wanted to back her up on it. They were just like, hey, you, you want to do it? Go ahead and do it. That way, if, if, it, if it got struck down, then it just got struck down and she looked bad. But what ended up happening is by her filing this motion, and bringing all this stuff to the light. Now, all of these lawyers are like, wait a minute, hold on. Let me get my turn to ask this guy some questions. And they pretty much ask these same questions. We're not going to go through all that. We're just going to pretty much go through what she's saying and what Trump attorney is going to ask her. But yeah, you're right, Jeremiah. You're right. She's sitting there 
with her phone. She's like this the whole thing. But you can see them cheekbones like that. <laughs> She's laughing. I think that's the court reporter. But you can see it. It's him, dude. Yo. Now, like I said, this is a, this this channel. We we like to hold people accountable for things, right? And we're gonna hold Terrence Bradley accountable for pillow talking to this girl, to this lady. I'm sorry, to this lady because we don't know what his motives were. Could have been that he was just simply scorned like a female because Nathan was winning and he lost and he got kicked out of his own law firm. Right, because he had a contract with the county, and I'm sure he's lost out on all that money. Remember, it, well, if you didn't know, Nathan Wade and they, the, their practice, they were ambulance chasers, right? And there's nothing wrong with it because it's good money in doing that, right? But all they did was injury cases, you know, things like that, small civil cases before Fanny came into the picture. When Fanny came into the picture, oh, they started making money. And then he did what he did and got kicked out. So he's he got cut out of the pie. So he figured, well, if I can't eat, can none of y'all eat? Well, Nathan, you can't eat because he showed dress and he's not. Let's get back to it. And look at her face. She got she got a whole face right there. Same objection, Your Honor. This is, this is the exact same issue, right? Well, I'm asking if he remembers that. He hasn't answered that question yet. Right, but the relevance of whether he remembers it isn't established until we know how he remembers it or why he knows it. If that makes sense. I guess not. <laughs> I'm sorry. How he knows it? I'm, I, I'm sure. just asking if he told me that. Right. So I wasn't asking how he knew that. I wasn't asking the source of that knowledge. I was asking if he told me that. Sure. That's it. But I, that's the point. It's how he knows it. Right. The source of his knowledge is the state with him then is hearsay because it's gossip and innuendo, um, which is what was indicated from last year. Well, it may not be hearsay. It may not be gossip. We haven't really gotten there yet. We don't know how he knows what apparently he's telling her. And I think we need to figure that out before we can go any further. Yes. And if the source of the information is a witness who've testified, then it's not hearsay. Um, so when did the relationship start? I cannot answer that. Uh -uh. When was your first knowledge of the relationship? Objection, Your Honor. He's already answered that question multiple times today. He said he had no idea the timeline or, or when it occurred. That was one of the first questions that was asked. I didn't ask when. I asked his first knowledge. He testified he has knowledge that they had a relationship. I asked him when he first got knowledge of that. Okay. So if the question is when did you first get knowledge, I think we can start there. That was the question. Yes. Right. Thank you. When did you first get knowledge of their relationship? I've said over again that I was not, I didn't have any personal information where I could personally say when it started. I've said that time and time again. And, and so I don't, I don't know when the relationship started. And that wasn't my question. So mm -hmm. my question is, when did you first gain knowledge? I didn't ask the source of the knowledge, didn't ask you to comment on the validity of the knowledge. I asked when you first had knowledge. We'll get to the how, Mr. Abadi. So I'll... Uh, not the objection, overrule it. You can answer I, that. Just for the record, I appreciate your honesty. Um, but he said he has no personal knowledge, so it's clear he had to gain the knowledge not from, from hearsay. He could have gained it from sure. Mr. Wade. Well, I mean, most of us learn things from hearsay. The question <laughs> of whether whether it's admissible, right? And that's what we got to get to. So. <clears throat> I apologize. Right. Um, when did you first get knowledge? I'm not qualifying what type of knowledge. I'm just asking when you first knew about the relationship. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, so I can't give you a date if you're asking for a date. If you're asking me, how did I get the knowledge? It would have come directly from a client. Right. So... Help me understand. I think you, you say you can't answer that question. You don't know the date. So that's the answer to the question. But I, I said that five minutes ago. We have to make it clear. Yes, sir. Next question, Ms. Merchant. So you don't know the specific date? No. Do you know if it, can we narrow down the timeline? Was it, did you gain knowledge in 2019? 
of this relationship beginning. I'm going to object to this line of questioning as he said he does not know sure. when he came. Uh, he overrule, doesn't know the specific uh, date. It's fine, Ms. Merchant. I think we, I'm overruling that. I think we can try to see if he can narrow it down based on goalposts. Thank you. Um, 19, I would probably say no. I mean, I, I don't have anything that I'm, I'm, um, there wasn't a specific date. There wasn't a football game. There wasn't something that I can attribute to him telling me whatever. And so you're asking for a date. You're asking for a year. It's still a date. And at this time, I am telling you that I do not have the date. Um, let's try this then. So you received a contract from Ms. Willis um, January 2021, correct? Uh, can I see the... Uh, yes, I yes, I think so. Are, I think, okay. I think, I, I think it, um, if it was from the uh, exhibits, I think it was 21, yes. And I don't want to belabor the point. You <clears> those yes. When you were here before. Yes. Um, if those documents that you looked at last time... Yes. It's like January 2022. That's... Okay. 21. I I'm sorry, 21. You're right. Thank and you. And it was, I think, renewed in 22. It was, yes. So the contract date was um, that we have in the record is January 25th, 2022. So using that date, at that point, had they begun their romantic relationship? Of 2022. January 25th, 2022. 2021, I'm sorry. When you got your first contract. I... I don't recall, um, I don't recall any, any specific, uh, dates. No, ma'am. You remember when you got that contract though, correct? I remember I had the contract, yes. Okay. And you told us last week, or I guess it was the week before now, you told us that Mr. Wade brought you that contract, essentially told you about that contract. That is correct. Um, so Ms. Willis is not the one that brought that contract to you directly. It was Mr. Wade. That is correct. At that point in time, they were already engaged in a relationship, though, correct? I'm object, I can't say that. The characterization of what Mr. Bradley just said. He just said he does not remember. There's nothing specific. He doesn't remember the exact date. I think the question now is to reference it or tie it to maybe some other event that he might remember. I agree with Your Honor. She asked that specific question. He said he does not remember any specific dates after signing the contract. That's exactly sure. what he just said. This is asked right. and answered. I know. And we're getting to the end of it. So, Ms. Merchant, you don't have much more to pull on here. But he answered that last question. So what's your next one? Oh. Let me stop it right there. Look at that face. Look at that face. <clears throat> that is the face of an um, upset man right there. Look at that. Look at that. He's embarrassed publicly. He don't remember nothing. Suppose, supposedly, don't remember nothing. Now, last week I talked about how you know someone lying, right? Now, if you notice, I don't want people to remember this because this is a, a life skill that you learn dealing with folk. Kids do it, but adults tend to do it too as they grow into adulthood when you're not a very good liar, right? So now notice that when he talks about the contracts, things like that, he knows it right off the top of his head. But when it comes to when Nathan started dating with Fanny or anything got to do with Fanny, uh, 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 he got to think about it. How do you know, how do you remember so well when you started a job, but you don't remember anything else that's not how the mind works yeah you can have a short-term amnesia or whatever the case may be but if your brain don't work it just don't work you don't remember nothing from that time period you don't remember certain things but not all of them right you, you don't sit there and say oh well i uh i don't recall a certain time frame, but you recall the time frame when you started working and making that money. Yeah. 
Terrence is sounding like came <laughs> to society when he was being interrogated. That's, they're putting the full court press on him. Like I was saying, Jermon, they're pressing him from both sides because in a minute you're going to see why, and I'm going to stop it when, when it gets to the point to where you can see why he's acting the way he's acting in court. But they're pressing him in court and outside of court. Okay? They're pressing him outside of court because he's messing up the money. Remember, Nathan Wade has made $700,000 off the Donald Trump case. And ain't never done no work. All he's doing is sitting and watching the other attorneys do the work. He's just sitting there, clean as a whistle, with his custom tailored suits on and his American pin on his on his blazer. But he ain't doing no work. The other attorneys are doing the work. He's just the leader. He's the special prosecutor, but he's not doing any work. And he's just billing and getting paid. And Terrence don't like that. And think of how long Nathan has been on, was on the case before he resigned. He had to resign because of Terrence. So in a minute, you're going to see why he's acting like this. Let me get back to the video. But look at that face. Look at him. You can see why. He, he he just looks like somebody that's that's scorned, like a scorned man. You ever heard of a scorned woman? It's a scorned man. That's the look right there. Because he did all that pillow talking with Ashley, thinking that it was gonna be in confidence and in secret. And then she had to call him to testify. And he would have never open his mouth, none of this would have never happened. But I digress. Let's get back to it. And, and Judge, I, I didn't hear the answer if they were in a relationship right. January 25th, 2021. Rally, do you recall the question? I, I, I recall the question, and I can't tell you accurately whether or not they were in a relationship at the time. You asked me about him bringing a contract. <laughs> I said he did bring a contract. And remember, he tried to say that a lot of the stuff that they're asking him about Nathan was attorney-client privilege. The judge determined that none of it was attorney-client privilege. He didn't want to answer any of these things because he's being pressed. This is this is the face of a man that's being pressed, severely pressed. And that is accurate. Do you remember prior to do you remember knowing Miss Willis prior to her taking office as the DA? I had very little contact with Miss Willis. Um, I knew her. Um, through my business of coming down to Fulton, if that's what you're asking. Yes. You knew her through the business. Um, so had you had met her prior to your contract? I'm going to object to relevance at this point as to why we're here today. Sure. Judge, he doesn't remember much of anything right now. And so I'm trying to create a timeline to hopefully piece this together. All right. Well, um, I, I'm not seeing really the the likelihood that that's going to have any success, I'll, I'll let you ask a few more questions. But if he doesn't have a date, then I don't know that you're going to be able to create one today. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so the time that you had this contract from January 2021 until January 2022, did you come in and out of the DA's office? Yes. And so were you able to witness Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis interact during that time? I'm going to object. This has been asked and answered. It was addressed at the last hearing about Mr. Uh, Bradley's access to and from a specific room to pick up files. Uh, Mr. Bradley said that sure. he rarely saw them together, um, but this was. Yeah, I think the only avenue that was closed at the last hearing was his personal knowledge, potentially through. Well, actually, no, if he testified, it was that he had no personal knowledge. It's knowledge that conveyed to him that was cut off at the last hearing. That's really the only thing we hadn't been able to explore, unless you correct me if I'm wrong. Knowledge that was conveyed to him by? By somebody else. That's That he claimed at the time was privilege. I found that it's not. That's what we're here to explore. Okay. Um, do you remember telling me that not many people knew where they met? 
object as to relevance, as to his personal knowledge, yeah. which is what 602 requires. Yeah, I mean, we're back to the same point, Ms. Merchant. His personal knowledge is what I'm asking him what he told me. But he hasn't yet told you how he knows that. And so if, unless he, he can establish why he should be testifying on this at all, then there's no relevance. <laughs> And I don't know what, how he knows that. That would, then be the ask next, him. that would be the next question. But ask I first, him how he knows it. I first have to establish that he said that. No, you don't. You could go the other way around. <laughs> um, when you told me that it started, when you left, when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you gain that knowledge from? Oh, I'm going to object because his testimony a few minutes ago is that he did not recall making that statement. All right, I'll overrule that. Mr. Bradley, answer the question if you can. Repeat the question. <clears throat> when you told me that their relationship started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you obtain that knowledge from? It was... I was speculating. Um, I didn't have a um, no one told me I was speculating. No one told you that? No one told me that. You were speculating based on things that had been told to you or things you had observed? So I'm going to object as to uh, the nature of uh, this line of questioning because the witness has made it clear he was speculating as to how or what he knew. And if it's speculation, it's inadmissible before this court. All right, but the motivations for his reason for speculating would be admissible, so I'll overrule that. Thank you, Judge. Was this speculation, when you told me that, was that based on things that had been told to you and things that you had witnessed? I never witnessed anything. So, um, you know, it, it was speculation. I can't tell you um, anything specific, if that's what you're you're asking. You can't tell me anything specific as to why you speculated about that? No, this was however many years ago. I mean, I don't recall, but no, I, I don't. Did you have any reason to lie? I don't know if speculation is lying, but um, well, let, let me just show me where in this text it says you're speculating. You didn't text. ask me if I was speculating or guessing. I didn't ask you, but tell me if it says anywhere here. That no, if this is the same one that you just showed me, it does not. And you're welcome if you need to to look at your text. Um, is there anywhere in here that indicates that you didn't have knowledge of no. knowledge? No, I'm going to object. The line of questioning your honor directed counsel to uh, explore is where he got the knowledge. He's explored that. He said it's speculation, and he didn't get it from any source other than his own speculation. Sure. So I, think, I, I think we're flushing that out, and uh, I think it's her right to have a little leeway on this if he's an adverse witness. Thank you, Judge. And Judge, he's speaking with directions or clearly coaching the witness because he's regurgitating? Your Honor, I have... <laughs> I object what? and take offense to that comment. I'm objecting based on the law, and I'm, and I'm making a record for the court. Right. Um, so I, I, I take offense to that comment. It's not the case. All right. Well, uh, I think we can start with uh, objection, the grounds, and the rule number. And then if I need more, I'll ask. Thank you. All right. Thank you. What did Nathan tell you about the relationship? Objection. Hearsay. Nathan has testified. Yeah. Hearsay. It's still hearsay. It's an out-of-court statement being brought in for the truth of the matter asserted. So hearsay. Judge. Right. Yeah, this would be for impeachment by contradiction, which Thank would be you. an exception to the hearsay rule. And admissible as substantive evidence, and the privilege issues are overruled. Thank you, Judge. Well, I think you just overruled the privilege objection. But we don't know when he's talking about. So we've already established that December 2018. Right. Let me stop it right there. Shout out to the cameraman. For catching that angle right there. Because lo and behold, look who's sitting front and center, laser beaming Terrence Bradley, Mr. Nathan Wade himself. Full court press, ladies and gentlemen. I said this full court press. 
He's being pressed outside the court. Now he's being pressed inside the court. And also, you got to think of the awkward position that Ashley Merchant is in because, I mean, yeah, she's doing her job, but look at her. She's standing right in front of Nathan Wade asking his former attorney about things that he possibly lied about because he's going to impeach his testimony. And at the same time, Terrence Bradley was trying to keep all this on the hush-hush, trying to keep it a secret because he didn't want Nathan to know that he said anything. That's why he don't remember nothing because Nathan's sitting there front and center looking at him just like this. And now Ms. Merchant has brought up the fact that she thinks that they're coaching him by objecting to certain things and telling him what to say and what not to say. Oof. Pressed. Like a pair of heavy stars jeans. Pressed. Nathan is in the courtroom during the whole entire testimony. Listening. Taking notes. Because you better believe that they're going to sue after this. After all this is over and done with, Terrence Bradley is going to get sued by Nathan Wade civilly. So in a civil matter, he's going to sue him. Because if you would have never said anything, we wouldn't be going through this. And I'd still be making bank. Now, everything's came out. Everything has came out that I've been hiding money from my wife that I'm trying to divorce. You know, everybody knows I'm, I was smashed in the DA. Probably still smashing the DA, to be honest with you. But that ain't my business. That ain't your business. That ain't nobody's business but theirs, right? But because of Terrence, everybody knows. Don't you hate when somebody gets all in your business and puts your business out on the front street and you're trying to keep stuff on the low? See, that's why you can't really... See, the only reason... Well, that's why you really can't tell people things because people talk too much. You don't know who to trust out here. And this is a prime example of that. Who can you trust, right? And what makes it so bad is that we know that Nathan Wade just simply went into the office of Terrence Bradley and said, hey, typed up my divorce. Sign your name on it. That's all he did. Just put your name on this. What is this? It's my divorce. You're representing me in my divorce. They're going to press him about that, too. They're going to press him about all this. And because he's scorned like a female, right, he had to go blow up the entire thing. Now, they're still going to try to prosecute Trump. I don't know how successful it's going to be, but they're still going to try to prosecute the man. And, excuse me, it's allergy season starting here, and I'm real jacked up right now. And Nathan could have gained some kind of experience because he has no experience prosecuting felonies whatsoever. He was an ambulance chase, like I just said. This is his first felony case ever. If anything, he should have been second or third chair in this, but he's the special prosecutor in the whole matter. Yeah, we got 16 people watching across all three platforms. Please make sure that you hit that like button. Please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Please make sure you hit that notification bell. Do yourself a favor. Tune in. Make sure you hit the notification bell so when we go live, you know and you get notified. Thanks, Jeremiah. Now, there's nothing worse than someone scorned. And we got a prime example of one right here. But you can look at Nathan. Look at Nathan. He's sitting there with pen in hand. Making notes. I guarantee you all this will be brought up during the civil trial because he's going to take him to court. I'd sue the brakes off of him. Because why were you even telling her this anyway? 
This is horrible. And you can see, look at him. Let me get a little closer. You can see him. He's just right there in court. Let's get back to it. Sure. And that's something I covered in the in-camera hearing. And I'm based on what he told me in that in-camera hearing. Uh, I don't believe any statements to this effect were covered by privilege. And Judge, I just want for the record, because sometimes the record doesn't reflect where people are looking, and that when I ask a question, Mr. Bradley is looking at Mr. Wade and his lawyer to wait for them to object, and they're clearly interacting somehow in the court. So I just want the ref record to reflect that, because it wouldn't otherwise. It's there now. Uh, you. You, a question was put to you, Mr. Bradley. Judge, one of my lawyers is standing, is sitting right in the back, A, um, we're that's behind. Behind. Down that rabbit hole. You can look wherever you want. Yeah, and, and I've never looked at Mr. Wade or his attorneys. That sounds quite true. All right. Mr. Bradley, question was put to you. Uh, repeat the question, please. Yes. So I showed you, um, or I asked you, I'm sorry, the question, the last question I asked you was, what did Nathan Wade tell you about the relationship? Same objection, Your Honor. And that's already been ruled upon. I recall him stating that at some point they were dating. Uh, I can't tell you what date that was. It was made in confidence. We were in the back of our office. Our offices were the only two in the back. There was no one else present. That is all I can tell you at this time. One time? One time. You only had a conversation with him one time about the relationship? Objection. Asked and answered. No, I think that's a uh, clarify for a thorough and sifting cross. Ms. Birch. I do not recall any other time that he mentioned uh, that they were in a relationship. No. Um, so other than, so you talked about this one time, um, and you said you don't know when it was though, correct? That is correct. Um, was it before Mr. Wade, before you got the contract in Fulton County? Let's start with that. I did not recall. Okay. And, um, how did it come up? <clears throat> Say again? How did it come up? I do not recall how it came up. Um, it was in the back. I know it was, I know where it occurred. Um, in our offices in the back. I can't tell you what we were discussing prior to that. Okay. Did you receive an email from me on January 6th um, with a motion attached? I think I did, yes. Yes, I know I, know I, I received a, I don't know if the date is January 6th, but yes, I received that. Okay. Yes. Um, so you remember receiving that? Yes. The date, okay. Um, and you reviewed it, and then you you and I spoke about it. Do you recall that? <laughs> Did we speak over the phone, or are you saying through a text? That's what I'm asking you. I, I can't speaking. remember um, whether it was text to phone or. But you recall us speaking one way or another. One way or another, yes. Okay. Um, and where I was trying to confirm the facts in that filing. I think I remember um, <clears throat> there was a line of about um, the accuracy of um, how much money that my office, the law, the law office of Terrence A. Bradley, uh, had received. Um, and whether or not that was going to be in the motion or not. Well, there wasn't a discrepancy. I had kept that out. You asked me to put that back in, correct? I don't, I, I recall you, um, that may be accurate, yes. And you thought because you thought it might be suspicious if you 
we discussed that it should reflect the accuracy because the accuracy was that I received, um, I had a contract and received 74 grand, 74,000. Um, and I think you had put in there that Mr. Campbell had received a certain amount. And then you also had put in there that Mr. Wade had received a certain amount, but there was not anything in there originally. And I said that it needed to be accurate. I needed to be accurate as far as that I had received 74,000. Right. That's correct. Because you did not want anyone knowing that you had talked to me. I wanted you to be accurate as far as the accuracy of our message or, or your filing. Okay, so that was your, so your interest was in, in accuracy in the file. I didn't reach out to you and say, send me a copy of your motion. Right. I didn't reach out to you to say that you were, that I'm going to be in your motion. Right. I asked you to review it for accuracy. Right? For accuracy. And I just stated that it was inaccurate. And the inaccuracy that you pointed out was the thing about your time or how much you had made. That was the inaccuracy that I, I saw that jumped out was the fact that um, I saw that I was left out when you had put okay. the firm, um, the money was. I did not, I did not, um, when I responded to that, it was for that specific reason. Okay. And I agreed I would put that back in, that section back in. And I, Correct. I did put it back in and I sent it to you again. I don't recall getting a second email from you now. But you were happy that I put it back in or that I agreed to put it back in. And objectives to relevance. Yeah, we need to get, we need to, get to more material aspects. Well, Yes, Judge, I, I'm moving along, I promise. So you asked me, you did ask me to put that back in. Well, an answer is probably yes. Well, you didn't answer that last question, so we ruled. You did, can you confirm you did ask me to put that back in for it to be accurate? Yes, that's correct. I said that, um, yes. Okay. And then I asked you if everything was accurate and you said, looks good. Correct? I, I recall you asking that, but the looks good was applying to the accuracy of the 74,000. That's it. Okay. Um, so when you were- Let me stop it right there. Now, what he's referring to is a part in the text message chain where <clears throat> she sent him the motion to review and to try to keep him hidden from being discovered. She left him out. So she had it factored in that Nathan made a certain amount of money. His other law partner, Chris Campbell made a certain amount of money, but he's so arrogant. He wanted to make sure that he was reflected in making some money too. That's what it sounds like. I might be wrong. I might be wrong about it. But she sent it back to him and had him overlook the entire motion. And she asked him, is this accurate? And he said, it looks good. He was not speaking on one specific thing. He was specifically speaking about the entire motion. And it's sad to see somebody get up here and lie about something like that because you're busted, bro. They got the entire text message chain. For those of you that want to come up, I just put the link in the chat. Uh, they got the entire text message chain. So we know what was said about what.
and people can read things very easily. Nothing was taken out of context about any of this. So he's sitting up there making himself look bad because Nathan's in the courtroom and he's scared, basically, for lack of better words, he's scared because he knows he's messed up. He's made a grave error. He's made a big mistake doing what he did. And he should have never opened his mouth in the first place. He should have never said anything. Was this the right or wrong thing to do? It was wrong. It wasn't wrong because Nathan was making all this money and wasn't doing the work. It was wrong because you were representing this man. And this was attorney-client privilege up to an extent. Everything else that was said to him was just two boys talking, two acquaintances, two co-workers talking. It's a, that's like you being at work and you're in the break room and you're talking about a girl you're dating on the job or somebody that you're sleeping with on the job. And you're talking to one of your fellow male coworkers and the coworker goes to HR on you. Hmm. Imagine that. And then when you get into HR and you're talking about the situation, they bring in the person that you told. And then when the person gets in there and they did not ever saying anything to HR, but HR has got them in the office with you. And you're looking at them like you ran your mouth. So he shouldn't have said anything. He would have saved a lot of trouble. But because he ran his mouth, look at where we at now. And now Ashley keeps taking text message chains up to him that's printed out. She took and found a program in her app store that allowed her to print off her text messages right and show the entire text message chain that led up to all of this and he's sitting there on trial under oath denying all of it denying he ever said this or this what he said is being taken out of context this is not what he meant but when you read the text message chain, you clearly get the intent. And that was to sabotage Nathan. That was to sabotage it. And it's just something we have to do better as, especially as men, because just because something isn't going your way does not mean that you destroy everything from for every other man out here. What you should be doing is trying to figure out a way to bounce back on your own instead of saying, well, I don't like the fact that you're out here making it work and I can't anymore, so I'm going to destroy what you got going on. And that's not okay. That ain't okay. It's not okay that you're doing that because in the end, it's going to come back to bite you. And you don't want anything to ever come back to make you look bad because let's say he doesn't lose his law license. And I think he's probably going to lose his law license because of the working of uh, privilege, right? But let's say he don't. How many people do you think will ever let this man ever represent him again in any kind of anything, divorce, personal injury, anything? What? type of person will ever have confidence in this man as their attorney ever. Your reputation is tarnished. The same for Nathan Wade too.
People think people take things very personally, especially when it comes down to spending money with you. Oh, that's the attorney that cheated on his wife, left his wife for the DA, and I don't know if I want that in court because the court might look at it, you know. It's me and other attorneys out here. This is some things that people will say. Now let's get back to it. Viewed the motion, and you specifically pointed out that one thing that you that you found inaccurate. You didn't point anything else out that you found inaccurate in that motion, though, correct? No, I did not. And that motion alleged that their relationship began when Ms. Willis was in municipal court. If I can read, reread the motion, but um, I don't recall, but if that's what it says, but I, I did my saying um, that it looks good was when you put back in the 74,000 um, into your motion. Okay, and that's that wasn't what I was asking. What I was asking is you didn't tell me that there was anything else inaccurate in the motion, though, right? But I didn't state that anything was accurate other than the 74,000. Now, when I told you that I had this motion that I was preparing, you asked me to send a rough draft. No, that's incorrect. I approach, Judge. You may. Which page are you showing? They're not page number. It's um, January 6th. Was, yeah, of course. So um, we had been talking and you asked me to send you a rough draft and I told you, okay, but I didn't want it to be leaked before I filed it. Right? That is correct. That is correct. So you're the one that asked me to send a rough draft. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yes, that's correct. And that was at 10.08 on Saturday, January 6th. Um, and then... You got an email from me with that rough draft at 1025 that same day, correct? The, yes. You need to look at it. If, if it says 1025, then um, I know you sent me an email. Um, Why he's looking at it, I'm, I'm going to object us to ask an answer. We've been through the fact that he sent him a copy of the motion, whether it's typically said rough draft or not, and then asked about the accuracy. He's explained his answer, and I've uh, to ask an answer. So. I understand, Mr. Levine. We're getting there. Overruled for now. Um, and then I responded, when we were talking about that footnote that we were talking about, I said, I took it I took it out, but I can add it back. And you said, yes, add it back. Do you remember that? I answered that, yes. And then I said, anything else? Anything that's inaccurate? <coughs> and you responded, looks good. Do you recall that? Let me see the. And there, I, I don't know where the exhibits are. Um, so where's the negative? Is that refresh your memory? It says looks good, but as a as I stated before, I was responding to you putting me back into the motion for receiving seventy four thousand dollars in a contract. Well, that's not what this says. This says, you said, yes, add it back. And then I said, anything else, anything that isn't accurate. And you responded, looks good. So you weren't responding to put it back in. Your Honor, I'm going to object to this. Know, right? his motion. He wasn't the affiant of, of the motion or verified. Oh, overruled, Mr. Bonney. I'm talking about his personal knowledge. I've said twice. Overruled, Mr. Bonney. I've said twice that the looks accurate was, or I've said more than twice, was for the 74,000. Okay. 
you remember telling me about um, Nathan and Fawny coming to your office and spending time together at your office? No, I mentioned, um, I do recall testifying on the 16th that she had come to our office. And that was before she was elected as district attorney, correct? I recall that that was when she was district attorney. Because I said that there was a meeting held at my office. And who was at that meeting? I, now, I can't tell you that. I don't recall. But you know, Ms. Willis was there, Mr. Wade was there. It was at our office, um, actually, uh, Ms. Willis was there and there were other people there. Mr. Wade was not in that meeting. He was, he was in the back. Uh, I wasn't even in that meeting. Why did she hold it at your office? Then? I have no idea. Um, you also remember telling me about them spending time together at her law office before she took, <coughs> took her job. I don't recall, do you? I don't recall, do you have something to? Well, what I'm asking is, um, she, so let, let's back up a sec. So Ms. Willis rented a law office from Evans, or Andrew Evans and another lawyer, I think Stacy Evans. Um, you have knowledge of that, correct? No, I don't object to hearsay. If, well, how does he know the information? That would be the correct question. Okay, um, Ms. Mersh. I don't really know even how to respond to that. Um, you're saying, I'm asking if he knew that she rented yeah, offices. He may, have, he may have been there. He, he, <laughs> right. may have, he may have seen a business card or something at some point. I think you can answer that. I've never been to Ms. Willis's office when she was in private practice. I've never dealt with where she rented. I didn't even know where her office was. So. Do you remember though, knowing that she rented an office yes. from the office. Yes, you did know yes, that, that is correct, yes. Okay, and do you remember telling me that Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis would rendezvous at that office? I'm gonna object to, again, hearsay as to how he knows that information. He said he has no personal knowledge. He, he did just, not say he has no personal knowledge, Judge. He hasn't even answered it. No, he said in general he had no personal knowledge, so it's not been established the source of how he would know this because he said he's never been to her office. All right. Uh, Ms. Merchant, if you, if, if you, uh, I know you're trying to impeach him by a, a, a prior and consistent statement, but unless you can first back up and show why each statement is actually something that he had knowledge of, I, I don't know if this is going to be relevant. And Judge, I'm not even there yet, but again, that, a speaking objection, and so now I anticipate what our response is going to be next. Um, I didn't ask anything that was objectionable, but these objections are coaching the witness. I asked if he had knowledge. That's it. I didn't ask, did someone say this to you? I didn't ask, what did this person tell you? I asked if he knew. Well, no, you're, you're asking if you had knowledge, and then you say of something specific. So... Once I get an answer to that, if he has knowledge, then I will follow up with where that knowledge came from. All right, well, let's try again. So my question is, do you have knowledge of them meeting at that office? Objection, foundation. Okay, all right, overruled. Do you have knowledge of them meeting at that office? I have no personal knowledge, if that's what you're asking. I didn't ask that yet. I asked if you have any knowledge. Objection, that would be hearsay. No, overruled. Not if it came from Mr. Wade. don't Wayne, know where Judge. it came from. So he said, how do you, how do you know, Mr. Bradman? How do you know? Any knowledge that I would have uh, received would have come from my client at the time. Okay, so you had knowledge of this place that, that Ms. Willis worked. What did you know about them meeting at that office? Objection, hearsay. It's not hearsay, Overruled. Judge. How he knows it, and then you ask the next question. All right, he's already, she's already, he's already asked the next question. Can you repeat the question? Yes. How do you have knowledge? What knowledge did, well, you just told us. You told us Mr. Wade told you. So tell us what Mr. Wade told you about Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade meeting at the Evans office. Uh, objection, Your Honor, privilege. This clearly covers the time after December 2018. Covered by privilege. Yeah, um, overall.
you recall the question, Mr. Bradley? I do not. Okay. You re-asked the question, Ms. Murphy. What did you learn from Mr. Wade? I would clarify that for you on your own. About Mr. Willis, Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis meeting at the Evans office together. I don't object to ask an answer. He's testified that he hasn't answered. He haven't, we haven't heard an answer. He testified he had one conversation with Mr. Wade in the back of his uh, law Judge, office. No, and, his, and his answer may change. So to what, how to answer the question. I can't recall what the conversation was. Um, I do. I do recall um, knowing that they would that he would go down to the office or had been down to the office, but I can't tell you in what capacity or when or any of that, no. Mr. Wade told you that they had sex at the office, though, correct? I don't recall him saying that, no. You don't recall? No. So it's possible he did say that? You just don't remember one way or another? I do not remember him saying that. Um, <sighs> Do you recall that he had a garage door opener to either a house or a condo or something like that of Ms. Willis's? I've never seen a garage door opener. I've never been to Ms. Willis's house. I've never right. been to, and I'm trying to explain, I've never been. So no, I do not have any personal knowledge of him having a garage door opener. Let me ask the question again. Yes, ma'am. Like, as in you saw it, do you have any knowledge at all from Mr. Wade or any source that he had a garage door opener to access one of Miss Willis's residents? Not object to the, any sources to hearsay. All right, depends on the source. I ruled. No, not, no, I don't have any knowledge. So, when you told me that, did you just make it up? Do you have something that shows that I told you that? Yes, when, well, we're going to go through all the texts we can, but do you, so was that made up though? Well, I'm going to object because I don't, I don't that. recall him having, that's right, I'm going to object under 106 of the rule of completeness. I don't have that text message or any text messages that indicate that, Your Honor. And I, I don't have, if it was a text, I, we had that conversation. I actually think it was when he was on speakerphone and Mr. Merchant was there, but I'm not sure, but. Let me stop it right here. This man here. It's embarrassing himself. Let me welcome to the stage, German. What's going on, German? What's going on, brother Stefano? What's going on? What's going on? I, I can't call it, brother. You know, trying to make things, you know, crazy stuff. <laughs> what's, what's your take on this right here? I'm just going to say right now, hey, I've been entertained for the last few weeks. I don't know about anybody else. I've just been thoroughly entertained. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting a kick out of this, you know. But to me, at the end of the day, I could blame all all parties. One, yeah. my man's right there, you know, that was had to be purely out of, like you said, out of jealousy. Because, you mm -hmm. know, you figure, you know, he was representing his man's over there for probably a set amount of price. Then also when he found out he was getting this type of money, Oh, wait a minute. I feel like I'm getting short change here. We got to do something about that. No, so, he got kicked out of the firm first. That's right. He got kicked out of the okay, right. firm. Yeah. Yeah. He got kicked out of the firm first. Then on top of that, and then on top of that, when he found out what type of bag this dude was getting, dude, oh, he was holding out on me. Yeah, he was, he was getting a nice little bag. Yeah. He, oh, so this dude been holding out on me. Okay. I, I'm going to fix him. Then my man, then my man, um, Nathan Way, it's like, Come on, man! Like that old, like that old school saying goes, you don't, you never number two where you sleep at, and it's like, it's like, dude, you, you, you asking for trouble. Like I've seen so many situations where coworkers linked up with each other, only for both of them blow up their spots. It's like you know, when they say have professionalism, they when they say have professionalism on the job. That includes everything, even even relationships. Now, whatever you do off the clock, outside the job, your personal business. But when you out there in the same work confines, you know, in a, in a relationship, and it's beyond the work relationship, you asking for trouble. 
And we see at the end of the day what happened when these when these um when those cases when these files charges start getting dropped against Trump. What's the first thing uh they told they told Fannie, hey, either you go or or, or your man's Nathan go. She kicked yeah. him, she dropped him like a bad habit real quick. So who's, so who's yeah, so who's to say that this doesn't happen later on if, if my man Terrence doesn't do this in the first place? Because yeah. you know it was something was gonna happen, you know, something was something was bound to happen. This is probably the universe is saying, Hey, let's go ahead, get this, get this blank show on the road. Get it out there and get it over with. Because I felt the longer this thing would have went on, it would have got worse and more stuff would have came out. And I still believe more stuff is going to come out. And in the meantime, at the end of the day, whether you hate this man, whether you like Trump or you hate Trump, it's just one of these things. People seeing what's going on and, and it's and all they're doing this 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 right here is just proving him right what he was saying four years ago. And this he is down all, in Georgia, right? Really, really really doing just proving hey <laughs> now y'all see what i was talking about and now people are starting to come around you have people that were hardcore and again i'm don't get political as far as i go they're all part of, of the same of the same of the same machine you know i tell people that in a minute i don't care if you worship the blue elephant or the red donkey all part of the same same lodge and if you know anything about lodge business you know the lodge lodge ain't gonna never lose lodge is gonna mm -hmm. win this is lodge business and we're starting to see a lot of these folks is boxing above their weight class. The Lodge has sprinter vision. They have long memories. They're just sitting back and letting everybody throw throw their rocks, throw their rocks at the house for they return fire. And as you see right now, this stuff is just slowly falling apart. You're gonna probably them having a little more charges getting dropped now behind this. And it's just at the end of the day, the blowback is gonna be so bad. You're gonna have people basically gonna be blackballed from their industry now moving forward. Nobody nobody's gonna to wanna to touch this. You know, you you hired somebody who has no experience in in prosecuting anybody. Like you say, he was he was over here doing accident um uh, claims and stuff, you know, trials. You bring somebody on uh <laughs> to take on uh, uh, somebody in a giant house, like come on, like like nah, you know, that that was just bad from the start, you know. And for these people to be as smart as they say they are, had these degrees, you know, in, in this type of profession, now you got to ask yourself, well, damn, you know, like, how did you get here again? <laughs> you know, you, you, I mean, you just, this is where the common sense comes in at. Because now people got a right to look at this with saying what Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Common sense ain't that common, man. That's true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You in that's Georgia, true. though, right? Yeah. What, what are they saying down there? Man, they from day one. I'm out here in West Georgia, so you know, from day one, they was like, "Yeah, this this, this thing ain't going." They was like, "Man, this, this is a big giant blank show." And again, I want to you know be respectful, so you know what I mean. You know when I yeah. say blank show, yeah, yeah. they yeah. said this is a big giant blank show. Uh, she's she's boxing way above her weight class. The mm -hmm. same thing with the, with the individuals in New York right now, boxing way above their weight class. Like you taking on the lodge, you, you ain't got the you ain't got the manpower to take on the lodge. Now again, she's used to dealing with these little rappers and that. See, them, them rappers fall under the illusion, as my man um Super Sly would say, seventy five would say, the black wealth of illusion. You know, like yeah, these dudes ain't got money like that. You dealing with people here, they got them up money and time. They can wait you out. They can just sit back. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. You can say all that, but just wait, wait till we go on the offensive. We just let you throw all your rocks. Eventually, you gonna run out of ammo. Then we are gonna return fire. And it's gonna be brutal. So it it's, is brutal. It's a long game. They're basically playing the long game. Why Fannie Willis and company are, are having Sprinter Vision playing a short term game. And, and as you see right now, they're getting winded right now. They're it, it's 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 just getting bad right now. But I'm just entertained by all this because it's gonna get more entertaining moving forward. You know, at yeah, the end I'm of the day, definitely, I'm definitely gonna stay on top yeah, of it. Like I was I'm telling you, day one. I ain't nobody going to jail until I see until I see a jail cell slam behind somebody. That's when I believe somebody going to jail. Up to that point, all these other people that took plea deals, they sitting back just chilling. They took one yeah. for the team. Their families are being taken care of. I guarantee you that. When it's yeah, said, I don't, I don't think nobody's going to jail. I don't yeah. think no, I, especially if not Trump. Mm -mm. Now I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not political. You know, I don't have. I got no, you. Yeah, I'm, same here. I'm neutral now. You know, but I don't. I don't know. Now, as far as this New York stuff go, 
he got two days to get that money right. You know, oh, he's gonna lose in properties. But his true social just went <laughs> nuclear. You know what I'm saying? So uh, 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 that's gonna bring him three billion and make his network around three billion. So yeah. and, and, and again, the thing with that, okay, like you said, I do real estate. I do real estate investing. So I'm like, okay. When you got the head person of, of the real estate board telling you no crime is committed, like this is done all the time. This has been going on for years. This there's nothing legal about it. You got the bank who you got the loan from saying that, hey, we went to Friday. Heck, we were not only paid paid back early, we were paid back with interest. And see, mm-hmm. that's the key thing that's the, that's get left out. They were paid back early. Mm-hmm. And they were paid back with interest. You know, so and again, where's the where's the victim? Where's the victim at this crime? There is none. Yeah, there's none. So right there in there, what does this look like? A typical, uh, uh, basically a witch hunt, you know, politically driven. And, and all, and the gentleman, and the one gentleman said it best on CNN a couple of days ago. Yeah, you go ahead and seize that man's accent. I mean, ax, uh, accent, accents. You just basically went ahead and just gift wrapped <laughs> this presidency to this dude, slam dunk. Because now, while everybody, you know, are looking at this from a left or right perspective, Take your emotions out of it. Kevin O'Leary said it beautifully. If you're a person, a business person in New York, why in the heck would you want to do business in a place like that? As a matter of fact, any type of, you know, blue red city, because you see what's going on. These businesses are getting out these blue red states, these, 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 you know, these democratic liberal states because of, of these policies. Yeah. You got an exit tax on people in that 1% that's leaving, but if you, but if they stay, you're going to punish them for staying. So it's like, you can't win for losing and you're just in the message and for whatever reason people forget there's there's 10 percenters and there's one percenters and the ultra people above the one percent they got those on, on one, the left you know, one percent yeah and yeah and they got they got those billionaires on the left side too you messing the game up for them and they recognize what's going on so mm-hmm. you don't think they sitting back right now in in the bathhouse somewhere all cracking jokes laughing like yeah you know what these people got to go, <laughs> you know, because they messing the game up. They messing the game up for all of us, you know. <laughs> you know, but now, now they'll tell the ninety percenters all day, we hate each other. But we know if you if you know what them what them bathhouses are about, yeah. you are you know what kind of conversations go up in there. They're sitting back laughing, but nonetheless, they're messing the game up for, for people on both sides that are in that well-to-do um, part of society. And they don't we're, like that. We're definitely gonna cover that Letitia James scandal because she got one of her own with that with the Irish. Yeah, we yeah, we yeah, I'm yeah. definitely on top of that. I'm just I'm bad and clean up right now. You know what I'm oh, saying? No, I, no, I got you, I got you. And then also, yeah. too, you may want to tag in as well. You know that uh what they call him, the the, the hustling preacher, the, the the flashy preacher. Um yeah, they they got him too. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. Well, you know him and uh was it Eric Adams is, is besties. You don't think you don't think right now they're looking they're looking at him seeing seeing if he was kind of hiding a little money. Nobody, money. nobody has implicated him yet. No, no, not not yet. Mm-hmm. But, but see, and, and and they they roll together. So you know, I, I guarantee you, some people are looking into this right now and saying, "Hey, let let's apply some pressure to see what we come up with." Man, <laughs> you know, it's pretty sure they will. Yeah. So, it, it, like I say, this, this is going to be entertaining. You know. This is gonna be this is this is, I'm entertained, you know. But at the end of the day, like I tell people, while this is while this is entertainment is going on, mainstream falls underneath the entertainment category. A lot of people don't know this. It's underneath the entertainment category. While all this stuff is going on, mm-hmm. you watch the C-SPAN one and C-SPAN two to see what kind of laws they're passing, to see what kind of laws they're kicking around. Because this this is the most perfect time to slip stuff in when everybody's distracted with all this madness. Never that's, let the classes go to waste. That's, the, that's what the whole Trump thing is about. It's a smoke screen. I keep telling people that. Let's Never get let back to the right. video. Yeah. Let's get back to the video. It's a smoke screen, man. I, I ain't stupid. I don't know. Hmm. I mean, I, if I'm asked to qualify exactly where that's from, I would. Okay. So, uh, rule of completeness would be if you need to introduce other text to show the context. If you're saying you don't haven't seen a copy yet, then I think. Ms. Merchant needs to do that before you can and I don't decide have, the next step. And that's that's what I was asking him. If he if if that was something he just remembers making up. If he doesn't, then 
that's fine. But she referenced text messages and started to go into her packet of papers. Sure. That text so you don't have a text message to that? I don't. I, I would need some time to look through, and I don't remember if I have a text to that or if it was during a conversation. It was one of those. All right. Well, and I'm, he has now said that he has no knowledge, so on to your next question. Okay. Um, did Mr. Wade tell you about the trips that he and Ms. Willis took? No. You have any knowledge of the trips that he and Ms. Willis took? Objection. Hearsay. Uh, overruled. Shout out to the camera man. Okay. But you did not before this proceeding? I did not know until you text that you, you found that in the um, deposition of his divorce. I mean, not, uh, not deposition, but something from his divorce. Okay. And when you responded, um, doesn't surprise me, they took many trips to Florida, Texas, California. Those are your words, though, right? You better object as to relevance. He said sure. he did not know and he actually learned from this merchant the information. He said he learned about certain trips from this merchant. Okay, you can uh, tie it down, but thank you. We'll he see. He had no information on any trip that Miss Willis and Mr. Wade took, that he learned it all from this merchant. That was his testimony. Sure. Judge, I'm allowed Maybe the conclusion we, we reach. Uh, I think she's going to ask more than one question, though. All right, Ms. Merchant. And if, Judge, just so, so we can be clear, if he said more than one version, that's all relevant. We're allowed to talk about the different versions that he's told. All right, I've overruled the Thank objection, Ms. Merchant. Do you remember telling me that it didn't surprise you that they took the trips that I found in the divorce file because they took many trips to Florida, Texas, California? And then you told me that they took the trip to California when she moved her daughter there because she failed out of FAMU. You remember that? I don't recall that, but if, um, I, I don't recall. Okay. Um, Judge, may I approach? It's, sure. you it's in one of the ones I gave you. So when that, <clears throat> so just just first let me know if that refreshes your memory. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's true that you told me that they took many trips to Florida, correct? Um, per that, yes. But uh, one of the messages is cut off. And you asked about some other trips, and I said, no, I didn't, I think. And that was specific to, at the top of that, it says, no, I didn't. Yes. And so that was to the trips that you asked me about. And I think before that, when you mentioned that you found all these trips, I think I said, oh, wow. Yes, you did. And you did not know about all the trips that were taken. And you, you qualified it. You said, no, I didn't. When did it happen? And then the next test, which I can get, or you can look at your phone or whatever whatever refreshes your memory, you said was after you left, after the firm was dissolved, correct? Right? Object to relevance. Overruled. It was after the firm. The, the, the trips that you said, no, you didn't know about. You told me those were after your firm had dissolved, correct? Right? I think you mentioned that they were after I left, maybe, or... Um, whenever you found them. And I said, no, I didn't know about those trips. So. So you believe I mentioned that it was after you left? I'm quite sure you have the text message and I will refresh my. Let me stop it right there. Yeah. She's got all the text messages and it doesn't matter how many times this guy want to sit here and say, I don't recall. I don't recall. I don't recall, bro. She's got you. She's got him. And he can say it as many times as he wants to. It's it's looking bad for him up here, and it's it's quite embarrassing for a grown man to be sitting here trying to lie about something that he clearly said, and they got the whole text message chain printed out. This is embarrassing. So I'm just saying we got to do better. 
there's got to be a better way of us dealing with anger issues and stuff like it. Because I understand that you got kicked out of your own firm, but you are a reason why you got kicked out of your own firm. And you cannot be mad at someone else because they're still doing what they're doing. Like I said, if you would have never been trying to, well, I don't know what his motive was. It seemed like he was salty. It seemed like he wanted to, you know, I mean, if you ask me, I think he was trying to get it Ashley, trying to pillow talk, thinking that this is going to help him some kind of way, and it didn't. But it's, it's really embarrassing that he went to this length and documented it. How did you not know that this was documented? You're texting all this stuff in a text message. It's not like it was a phone call. You're writing this stuff, and you it's, it's evidence now. You always think CYA, CYA, and you got to be able to control this narr narrative, and you just let it slip right out of your, right out of your hand. Jermaine, you still there? I don't know if you still there or not. If you is, just come back up. Let me get back to this video. Memory. Is it easier for you to refresh your memory with your own phone or with my my printouts of screenshots? Well, you have the printouts, so I have to... Judge, um, the reason I'm asking is because I'm getting objections that I've cut things off, and it's just the nature of how you have to print out screenshots. So in order to avoid that, I'm happy for him to refresh his memory with his own phone, if that would be... Well, I, I don't know if he's accepting your offer or not, so... You're would that be easier for you? You can just provide the documents. Okay. Let's see. Some water chats, please. Yeah, let me see what I can do. Sorry, just I'm just trying to pull out all of the messages that you may need. All right. Well, um, I don't really see at, so, at one, some point we're reaching the cumulative <laughs> point where we don't need to go through an entire six month text chain. You're making the point that he'd made some comments to you along the way uh, that led you to believe he had more knowledge than today, he's testifying that he had. And so if you've hit the high points of that, then I don't know what else we can cover that actually moves the needle. Okay. I'll, I'll just, I'll move on um, to the actual messages. So you told me that they took many trips to Florida. That refreshed your memory. You told me that. Was that based on your knowledge from Mr. Wade? That would have been based on anything that my client would have told me. I didn't have personal knowledge of whether they went or not. Um, the trips to Texas, and you, you're going to take to Texas. Is that based on your knowledge from Mr. Wade? It would have been something that came from the client. I cannot tell you that I have any personal knowledge of any trip um, other than what would have been said well, by the client. Obviously, I'm not asking if you went on these trips. I'm asking if you have knowledge from Mr. Wade. Um, you also typed California. Was that something that you gained from knowledge from Mr. Wade? It would have been from the client um, at this particular point. Yes, it would have been from the client. And when you told me that the trip to California was to move her daughter out there, would that have been something you gained from Mr. Wade? Thank you, Judge. Any knowledge that I have of any trip would have come from my client at the time. Um. You told us last week um, that Mr. Wade used your credit card one time. Um, do you know when that was? I do not. Relevant. 
Wade's. How are we here today? Well, uh, I think this would be impeachment of Mr. Wade's testimony if Mr. Wade testified that he'd never used anyone else's credit card before. I object to ask the answer because it was covered during the last year where he acknowledged that Mr. Wade used his credit card. So, but I asked when. <laughs> yes, I didn't, when? Okay. I didn't ask, did he? I asked, when did he? Let's go there. I do not have any dates of when Mr. Wade used my credit card. Um, I testified that we used the card for business um, and that um, throughout the business, we would order paper or supplies or um, filing of depositions, uh, I mean, the cost factor of cases is what I said, um, and that still applies today. Did he use my credit card? He did, but I can't tell you who he used that card, uh, what the trip was for. I can't even tell you at this time where he went. But he used it for a trip. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was for a trip, but I can't tell you where, when, why, or anything uh, to that nature, correct? And he paid you back in cash. I never testified that he paid me back in cash. I said that he would either pay me back, um, you know, I said I couldn't remember. I do not recall. Sometimes he would write checks, sometimes he would pay cash. And that still applies today that I do not recall him paying me back cash, but I do recall him paying me back. This was when you were still, before your partnership split up, correct? It would have been before I left the firm, yes. He wouldn't have used my card after I left the firm. Okay, so we can at least narrow down the dates to that. Of before I left the firm, yes. Okay, great. Um, and Mr. Wade gave you details about meeting Ms. Willis in Hapeville or East Point, as it was called. That's incorrect. He did not tell you about that? He didn't give me details. He did not tell you about meeting with Ms. Willis at an East Point or Hateful apartment? At this time, I don't recall. No, I, I, I don't recall. Where did you get that information from then? It's just that he doesn't recall if he even had that information. I asked if he got it from Mr. Wade, and he says he doesn't recall. So then I asked where he got it from. I do not recall where I got the information from. Okay. Um, and you and Mr. Wade were friends as well as business partners, correct? We were, we were friends um, in the sense of I've known him for um, years. Um, Yes, we were friends. And um, you definitely did not want to come and be a witness in this case, correct? That is correct. And um, it was after, and we talked about this earlier, the Gabe Banks called you and then Nathan Wade called um, one of your friends. It was after that that you hired Mr. Chopra to assist you in this matter, correct? Was it after that? Um, so I heard Mr. Chopra and I heard Mr. Graham. Now, Mr. Graham is here and um, when I received the subpoena, Mr. Graham was here at the last hearing, but he also had to go out of town, but he was present. Mr. Graham, I called um, and I had started getting calls from media and um, and I told him to respond to the media, I think, and that was somewhere around whenever you um, subpoenaed me. So it was, I can't tell you that um, it was that instance of those calls for um, Mr. Chopra, um, but I had engaged Mr. Chopra and 
Mr. Graham at that time. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask the question again because I didn't get an answer to it. After you got the phone call from Gabe Banks and from Nathan Wade to your phone. I think it was before that, but um, however, I, I think it was before that is what I'm stating. Um, when you got the phone from Gabe Banks, <clears throat> you called me immediately. Well, actually, you texted me and then you called me. I, I didn't call you immediately, um, but yes, we did speak. And you texted me about it as well. That is correct. And um, then we spoke after Mr. Wade called your friend, and we talked about that as well, correct? That is correct. And at that point, you didn't mention anything to me about being represented by Mr. Chopra. But I didn't mention anything about Mr. Chopra or... Uh, that is correct. Yes, that, that, that was only my question. Um, let's see. I'm going to show you two more. Um, All right, Ms. Merchant, we're going to do five more minutes. This is the last two questions. Thank you. 305, I'm cutting you off. Thank you. May I approach? Are these supposed to go together? Oh, these are two uh, two separate dates. Okay, all right. Do you recall me asking you, um, do you think it started before she hired him? And you said, absolutely. Do you recall that? I see that in the text message, yes. Okay. And um, do you also recall me asking you how they would react? As they would attack me. And you said, no, they will deny it. Your Honor, objection as to speculation as to how he thinks they will react. I think it goes to the motivations of the witness overall. And you told me that they will deny it. That, that's written in there, yes. Um, I just want to, one last opportunity. You're an officer of the court, correct? I am. And you're under oath today? I am. Is there any of your testimony from today or the previous days that you want to correct? That I want to correct? Yes. No, I told you everything that you've, I've answered everything that you asked. Thank you. Oh, Judge, um, the, just so. Yeah, we're going to end his testimony right there. Uh, oh, Jeremiah, what's wrong? What's going on with your camera, buddy? You might need to leave and come back in. You're looking like a Tetris puzzle. Unmute yourself. Can you see me a little bit? They've been having wind issues all day here today, so... That's yeah, you might idea. leave leave the studio and come back in. There you go. No, there you go right there. All right. There we go. Yeah, there we go. All right, so we wrapped up his testimony with Miss Ashley Merchant. He's got more going on with the rest of the attorneys. It's just too long to go through. But the, the important part is the where he has contradicted himself basically through the whole thing. <clears throat> Um, what's your opinion on just <laughs> how he fumbled this ball right here? Uh, yeah, he he knew he knew he screwed up. He knew he knew once he once he spilled the beans on their relationship. In his mind, he thought, "Oh, I could do this, you know, and you know, confidence. You know, I could do this in confidence." Confidence. Yeah. yeah. Then all of a sudden, now 
And I think it caught him by surprise when they actually made him get on the stand. And now he did not want to testify. Yeah, he didn't want to testify. So now he's sitting up here making up as he goes, realizing that, mm-hmm. hey, I really screwed up. And, you you know, hear him only, yeah. And not only did I burn this bridge with my former my former buddy here, that mm-hmm. I basically alienated myself with anybody else who may want to take me on in their law firm in the future. Because right. they're looking at me like, hey, we can't trust this dude. If he could turn on his best friend, Imagine what he'll do to people he don't know. Right. So he he knows his days are numbered. He 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 know he know his, his he's got to pretty much choose a whole whole new career when this is when this is over with. And he's already got a uh S harassment case against him too. There you go. And this so. and this right here is just that that final nail in his call in his career coffin. Like, hey, you're you're too toxic. We're, we're not gonna touch you, you know. Yep. So it's yeah, he he basically sold his own faith, and there's nothing else, you know. I could really add to that, you know, because his body language, body language, the slump shoulders, him stumbling over words, him having to look to the left to think of something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just, yeah, he he cooked his own goose. So, yeah, he's done. Yeah. All right, man. I want to thank you for coming up, German. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. I'm gonna go grab something to eat, man. This has been a while, and it's and it's still going. They interviewed Fanny yesterday. Somewhere at a, a, a Easter egg hunt or something, and she was talking about it. Is she's not stopping? So no. we're and gonna that, have more yeah, to go. On. Definitely, and on top of that, you know, she's been I think subpoena subpoena to get in front of some people. You know, to Congress, spend, yeah, yeah, and I guess she's blowing them off. Which okay, which 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 is her her mistake. She's gonna you know she's still she's still in her own faith. And that and the judge in this ruling, he's up for for re-election for his job. He basically gave Fanny, you know, Fanny death by a thousand cuts. Because now they're just slowly gonna start start breaking this down more and getting stuff taken out more and more and more. And the fact that she don't want to go have a conversation with these with these um individuals, see that's speaking volumes right now. You your know, camera, your yeah. camera's acting up again. Uh oh. <clears throat> your camera's acting up again. All right. Yeah. Let me see. Can you see me now? <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. Uh-oh. We're gonna wrap it up though, yeah. man. Thank you for yeah. coming up here, man. It's all right, good. guys. Please make sure that you are subscribed. Please make sure that you hit that like button. Please make sure that you uh share this with your friends. We're at 187 subscribers and we're trying to climb that hill. So all support is needed. Support your favorite content creator, guys. Thank you, everybody that's tuned in. And make sure if you're watching this on the replay that you leave a comment. Had some very funny comments on the last video we did about Nathan Ways. So please leave a comment. Hit the like button too if you're watching this on the replay. I want to thank you once again. This is Stefano. I'm out.